Hello and welcome to my channel. Try this as a series, breaking down a certain game or playstyle of a game. Today we're going to be talking Commander and breaking down Xur Eternal Schemer. I break my videos into chapters covering a variety of the deck's aspects. Go ahead and navigate to whatever you're specifically looking for. You can find them in the description or in the timeline. If you enjoy this content, then please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It really helps other viewers discover the content I produce and is a great way to show support. With that said, let's dive in. Xur is a 1-4 human wizard with flying that costs white, blue, black. He gives enchantment creatures he control death touch, lifelink, and hexproof. He has an activated ability that costs one white that reads, target non-aura enchantment you control becomes a creature in addition to its other types and has base power and base toughness each equal to its mana value. Xur is an interesting enchantress commander that gives a variety of useful keywords to your enchantment creatures. Normally the advantage of enchantment decks is that enchantments are protected for most board wipes. Turning them into creatures is normally risky, but they do get hexproof as long as Xur is on the field. The real advantage of Xur is that his ability is really cheap to use and is at instant speed. If one of our enchantments are ever targeted, we can turn it into a creature in response to protect them. In piloting the deck, this is how I normally played until I built up enough and started swinging out with creatures. Playing this way was a bit slow, but there are some very good enchantments in Esper we can add to be a bigger threat at the table. We're going to outvalue our opponents by jamming enchantments onto the field for various effects. Eventually, we'll turn them into creatures to threaten the board or to protect them from single target removal. Meanwhile, our existing enchantment creatures will have some great keywords. I'm running one infinite combo in Sanguine Bond and Exquisite Blood. With both of them being enchantments, it felt like this combo really fit the theme of the deck. If you aren't sure how this works, basically whenever we gain life or one of our opponents lose life, it starts a feedback loop that continues until every opponent is dead. With Zerg giving our enchantment creatures lifelink, it should be easy to kick off. You can also protect either of these enchantments from single target removal with the hexproof he provides. Starting off is the auto includes and soul ring arcane signal and thematic compass. Always found thematic compass to be a reliable card at any point in the game. It can help ensure land drops in early to mid game and then flip into a strictly better maze of it to protect us from Voltron commanders and other problem creatures. I'm running Burnished Heart and Solemn Simulacrum as some classics to get basics to field. These creatures are welcome in basically any list that doesn't have access to green. With them is Wayfarer's Bobble and Ornithopter Paradise. These cards along with the two previous creatures are all budget friendly and can really help out your mana base. Mindstone and Sword of Hearth and Home are two more great cards to ramp us. The sword can flicker our enchantments if we ever want to remove the creature type from them and can get basics directly to field for us. To wrap it up is Smothering Tithe and Black Market Connections. I pretty much put Smothering Tithe in most lists that can run it. It's an extremely effective card in Commander. Two mana isn't a lot to pay for, but most opponents will just let you have the treasure. Black Market Connections is a new card that honestly is incredibly good. I've been experimenting with it in a few decks and it's been really helpful overall. Versatile cards like this can be incredibly powerful and with Zerg giving enchantment creatures lifelink, we'll be able to heal through all the costs. Starting off is by Nathasa and Phyrexian Arena. With Xur giving Death Touch, it's likely our opponents will allow damage to get through, even if we end up getting a card. The Arena gets us an extra card per turn, and we can easily outheal the life lost. Esper Sentinel and Rhystic Study are some more staples in these colors for card draw. In general, these cards are very effective in Commander, and are normally auto-includes for decks that have access to them. Mikokoru and Gaia Reach Sanitarium are great lands that enable some extra card draw. I've included these lands in a lot of decks over the last couple of months. Outside of the cool suggestions and feedback from viewers, the best part about making these videos is discovering new cards, strategies, and playstyles I otherwise probably would never have tried. These two lands are good examples. They're both budget friendly and actually great to sink mana into even if it gives your opponent some value. Last up is one of my favorite cards, Court of Grace and Mesa Enchantress. I'll always shield this court as a great enchantment for decks with access to white. Monarch is a very fun mechanic, and in general, most players are happy to see it. The enchantment makes flyers regardless if you're Monarch or not to either protect yourself or get the Monarch back. There are 32 enchantments in this deck, so the enchantress should always draw you plenty of cards as well. First up is some copy effects in Clever Impersonator, Estrid's Invocation, and Mirror Maid. All can copy any enchantment we control. The Impersonator and Mirror Maid can copy our opponent's enchantments also for some more flexibility. These are all great cards that double up our enchantment effects or to just expand our options. Brilliant Restoration, Hannah, and Hall of Heliod's Generosity are all some ways to get our enchantments out of our graveyard. I'm running some scary effects in this deck and it's likely they'll get removed at some point in the game. Each of these cards are very effective and welcome in this list. Bitter Blossom, Hollowed Haunting, and Sigil of the Empty Throne are all enchantments that can generate some creatures for us. Xur will easily help us outheal the life paid to Bitter Blossom. 
Hollowed Haunting will provide flying and vigilance to add to the keyword soup Zero provides. Along with them is Shark Typhoon and the previously mentioned Quarter Grace and Black Market Connections. All of these token producing enchantments will help populate our board until we get into a position to start turning our enchantments into creatures. To also slow down our opponents is Propaganda, Ghostly Prison, and Sphere of Safety. All are effective at keeping our opponents from hitting us, especially the Sphere. In Enchantress decks, Sphere of Safety is incredibly hard to deal with. Zura being able to provide it with Hexproof and Instant Speed makes it even more difficult. Some high CMC enchantments we can use to turn into a creatures are Grave Betrayal, Martyr's Bond, and Mind's Dilation. Each is a powerful card in its own right and can be a huge creature to swing out with if we want to risk them being creatures. Martyr's Bond is a great deterrent against removing our non-land permanents. I think it's a really underrated card as a sort of catch-all dictative Erebos. Aetheriel's Shroud Veil and the archetypes of Courage and Imagination are some great enchantment creatures to add to the list. Courage makes Xur's Death Touch even more effective by giving everything first strike. The archetype of Imagination provides flying for us and removes flying for our opponents. Zura actually doesn't care if what he targets is already a creature, so we can actually upgrade Imagination to a 6-6 if we want to. The Theros Gods are great candidates for this deck. We can override their Devotion Clause at the cost of generally worse stats to force them to become creatures. For example, Aetheros God of Passage, Diasla God of the Sea, and Heliod Suncrown are all 3 drops with pretty good power and toughness. If we want to turn them into creatures with Zura, we could, but they'd all be 3-3s instead. This gives us some useful combat tricks with these creatures and advances our board state early if we want to. The Cutting Room Floor is where I talk about some cards around or over $10 at the time of recording that I cut from my list for various reasons but are worth mentioning the run. Though these cards didn't find a home in my list, they might find a home in yours. First up is Karmic Justice as another deterrent against blowing up our enchantments. Normally this is a great card for an enchantress deck, but I think Xur is an exception. This card only cares about non-creatures, so we'd actually turn off the deterrent if we turn our enchantments into creatures. Xur only provides hexproof as long as he's around, so our opponents could remove him and then whatever enchantment they would like to or board wipe without fearing this card. Maybe it would fit your deck better, but I thought I didn't synergize with the strategy I was going for. Starfield of Nyx is another way to turn all of our enchantments into creatures and can also provide some form of enchantment recursion. I never gave this card a shot, so I'm not sure how effective it would be, but it does fit with Xur's overall game plan. I always liked the pick and choose nature of Xur's ability, so I could choose what I wanted to keep as an enchantment. Also, I'm worried about board wipes completely decimating my board state if I use this card. Let me know how you feel about it in the comments and if you had any luck with this card. Luminarch Ascension is an amazing card that can single-handedly carry games for you if it gets out early enough. I cut it because honestly I'm already running a bunch of good stuff enchantments in this deck and I didn't really want to add to the pile, so for power reasons I cut it from my list. Last up is Leyline of the Void as a great card to really throw a wrench into many opponent's decks. I cut it because getting this card on field normally just paints a huge target on you. In an Esper enchantment deck, I think it makes sense to run, but it's more of a use at your own wrist sort of card. Enchanted Evening is sort of a high risk, high reward enchantment to run. It puts everyone's permanents at risk of a board wipe, but enables Xur's buff on all of your creatures and lets you turn anything into a creature. Next up is other enchantment creatures like Doomwake Giant, Grim Guardian, and Nixos Paragon. Enchantment creatures in general are just great includes for this list. You could probably build a whole list just including creatures like these. They're normally budget friendly, making a budget Xur list very viable. Next up is Alayla. With all the enchantments in this list, she would be a great way to generate some more creatures. She's a nice creature to squeeze out even more value from your enchantment spells. Daxos is a great creature that can generate some massive enchantment creatures for us. He's probably worth including, but this is one that I missed when originally building the list. I was reminded of him while writing the script, and I think he'd be a great budget replacement for something else. Dance of the Mance is another one I admittedly forgot about. It's a great way to recur a bunch of enchantments and turn them into creatures right away. If you want to butt their power, you could always upgrade them with Xur's ability also. It's a very flexible card in a deck like this. Resurgent Belief and Extinguish All Hope are some great synergy spells for the deck. Though Xur won't live through the board wipe, it will normally be one-sided and Xur is cheap to recast anyway. I didn't cover every card in this deck or every suggestion I have for Xur, so if you'd like to see the rest, check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing to the channel. Comment below on cards you think synergize well with this commander, and if you have any suggestions for commanders to build in the future. Thank you so much for watching, good luck, and have fun.